Funding for Public Square provided by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, working to improve the lives of vulnerable children. This program is part of American Graduate. Let's make it happen. A public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And viewers like you. Once you start presenting the facts that here's where New Mexico is, and it's shocking. Teen birth rates uh, in our county, in our community, are double the national average. The behaviors that we were seeing within our students, I was like, ah, oh, we gotta start talking about sex ed um, in fifth grade. We always teach abstinence, but abstinence, teaching abstinence alone will not reduce rates of sexually transmitted infections, and it does not reduce rates of unintended pregnancy. I think when we really put reproductive health education aside, like, well, it's sensitive and we'll let different school districts decide on what and how they want to teach it, I, I think we're doing a disservice. That was the biggest, I think, challenge in this state was to get health education as a graduation requirement. And those standards and benchmarks are great. And the thing is that they're great on paper. Once you learn about it, it kind of makes you not want to have sex because <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. <laughs> Welcome to Public Square, where civic dialogue takes center stage. If adults can't speak plainly about sexuality, anatomy, physiology, and just the scientific basis of it all, then why would youth take it with any seriousness? Why would... As young people grow up, they face important decisions, especially when it comes to relationships and sexuality. Those decisions can impact their health well into adulthood. What happens when they don't get the information they need to make healthy choices? One of the results is New Mexico's teen pregnancy rate, which remains among the highest in the country. Nationally, we also see the results in things like dating violence and sexual assault. Young people aged 15 to 24 account for one quarter of all new HIV infections and nearly half of the 19 million sexually transmitted diseases each year. Experts say comprehensive sex education isn't just discussing abstinence and contraception, it's about giving students the skills to understand healthy and unhealthy relationships and to communicate about sexuality and health. New Mexico's educational standards require school districts teach multiple strategies to prevent teen pregnancy and reduce risky behaviors. But not all schools report implementing these standards. So how do we ensure young people are learning the skills they need to protect themselves? Tonight we'll hear from students, parents, advocates and health experts. Then we'll talk with Chris Muir of Albuquerque Public Schools, Anita Hatt from Santa Fe Public Schools, and Charles Salee of the Legislative Finance Committee. Before we begin, we visit a peer training program in Albuquerque's South Valley. We're going to start off with a little icebreaker, but we're also going to learn to this. It's going to be a truth or false, and when you all can move up, can you please stand up? South Valley Peers in Action is a peer ed group. Um, we teach about um, STIs, birth control, healthy relationships. A pregnant woman who has had an STI can pass the disease on to her baby. True or false? We felt like it'd be a really effective way for young people to teach other young people about safe sex and healthy relationships because it's something they talk about in their social groups anyway and so it's already more comfortable and students are more willing to ask questions and interact and learn a lot more from their peers than from adults. Most STIs go away without treatment if people wait long enough. They develop interactive activities, they um, develop PowerPoints and they get to be the leader and they get to control like what kind of things that the other students do and they love that aspect of it. Some teenagers can be embarrassed or shy to go to their adult person and talk to them because they don't know, they don't always know what reaction they're going to get from them and I feel like they can come to us and trust us with and we can give them the right information as to what they can do when they're in certain situations. Can somebody tell me what they do want and don't want in a relationship? Or don't want, like I talked about healthy relationships and that's mostly what I present on because I feel like that's a 
another big issue in our community because not all teens know that they they might be in a in an abusive relationship. So if they know the red flags or they know like what's healthy and unhealthy, they can spot it and they can most likely end that relationship. I teach about STIs most of the time because um, I feel like it's not being taught as much. Now a lot of people don't know about them. I feel that my peers are more more likely to ask us that are in South Valley Peers in Action about questions they have because they most of the time they don't want to talk to adults about this because they feel like nervous or shy and they actually listen to peers more because if we could talk about this they know they, they can learn this. They're looked at as like very knowledgeable and the leaders and things like that in the classrooms when they're working with the other kids and I think that that's very empowering for them. It's probably one of the most uncomfortable things for a young person to talk about and then on top of that, public speaking, so it's an immense amount of skills that they're developing. I like seeing like people actually get knowledge through my teaching. Like it makes me feel happy because like, oh, I'm like accomplishing my goals and like teaching people and getting people informed, which is what I want to do. My friends have some very unhealthy relationships that I tend to tell them about. And they might not always take my advice, but they do listen and they do try to change things about their relationship. We have seen a decrease in um, pregnancy since the program's grown. And since we started doing peer ed here, they're just becoming so much more educated and aware about how to prevent and, you know, from that from happening before they're ready. Like that. And then pull the plastic part and it'd be inserted like that. So people are like, oh, that's weird. Like, why would you be wanting to talk about that? It's like, why not talk about it? Like we need to get like a conversation started, like stop like to stigmatize it and have people like make it normal for, to have this conversation. Some young people in New Mexico are getting great sex education and some people are not. We have amazing health education standards here. However, we don't see them being enforced across the board, across the state. They're getting so little information on how to actually become adults and as that pertains to their sexuality. Well, it's important to talk about sex education to teenagers because they're obviously going to have sex eventually and we need to educate them about that. I think as parents, you need to talk to your children about sex a lot and tell them what's going to go on because they listen to you, you're the parent and they lead, you're the leader and they follow you. So if you talk to them about sex and be open with them about it, then they'll listen to you and you could prevent your child from becoming a teen parent. So when you get into positive youth development programming, comprehensive sex ed, then young women and young men have the tools that they need to make choices that will result in better jobs and higher education and the ability to buy a home in their 20s and, and, and have that sort of American dream. It's very important that young people get access to this information. They deserve to have this information. It's their right.